Hi guys, it's Monica. I am going to give you a, a brief update, I think, on my skincare, uh, my morning skincare, and what I what I have been doing because I haven't done that in a long time. I still my evening skincare is pretty simple. You know, I still use my Retin A. Um, there's certain things that I do at night on my skin. Um, I like to use Milk of Magnesia <laughs> Mom, as we call it. Um, so there's just a bunch of different things that I do at night. And I'll talk about that in another video. But in the morning, what I've been doing, now I'm 70. My skin, most of my life has been dry. I have fine lines and wrinkles all around my eyes. Um, I have, you know, um, what do you call them? Nasolobial, whatever. And marinette lines. <laughs> I could benefit from a facelift. I just don't have the money for a facelift, and um, and even if I had the money, I don't think I would. I don't think I would do it. You know, I, I think I'm afraid to to do that. I've seen I've seen some women that have done it, and even though the results have been fabulous, I look at what they went through, and I'm just too much of a chicken to go through that. You know, I really am. So I'm gonna just try to do what I can, and and hopefully age somewhat gracefully, I guess, you know, I guess that's all I can, I can hope for at this point in time. Being 70, uh, my skin, your skin, I think as you get older, your skin changes anyways. It's amazing, you know, because I remember how dry my skin always was. I didn't hear in my mouth, sorry. I can remember how dry my skin always was, and it seems to be that it's not as dry, and that's kind of really weird. Now, I know it could be a uh, part of the collagen. I've been taking, you know, collagen every day, two scoops of collagen in the morning, and I've been doing this since 2016. So it's been a long road of doing that consistently. But in the morning, I typically, and I've mentioned this before, I typically get up and I just kind of like, maybe I'm going to the bathroom or whatever, and I just kind of like splash my face, not ever really having to wash it because I, I never go to bed with makeup on at night. I go to bed with a very clean skin at night after my skincare. I, I, there's nothing on my, my skin but skincare when I go to bed at night. So I wake up, my skin is pretty clean, but I still kind of, kind of wash it off. So one of the things that I've been doing is that I start off in the morning and I start to use my Nera device. I've talked about Nero. I've shown um, my results of using it after the 90 days, and I was really blown away by those results. Enough so that I I would not go without this. Now, I I just have the Nero, the Precision. I don't have the, the big one, the Pro. I don't have any of that. So what I do on my clean face, and I can do this in bed. I've done this in bed. Sometimes I'll get up, I'll do it on the couch, depending on where I'm at. And I typically will start here and I work my way down it, the beeps and I lift and I'm covering this is the really bad area for me where I drive and my wrinkles. So we'll cover that and move all around until you hear that long beep, then you know that area has been covered. And then typically I go to this eye and I go down like this. And it's pretty well 40 times that you're doing this. And I never count it. I just wait to hear for that mm, long beep. And then I move on to a different area. Now, because this area I've just focused in going down, then I come back here and I do my eye. And I do the same thing, just my, my eye, where my crow's feet are or whatever, and until it beeps. Usually after that, I come to my nose here and I work my way down and up and across this whole area here my marinette lines, my nasal lobia folds, and I do that until it beeps, and then I repeat here until it beeps, and then I normally go under my nose, all here on my upper lip until it beeps. I've not done anything on my forehead yet. I've not done anything around the upper part of my eyes or my eyelids. That's pretty well my routine, and when it stops, I typically, you know, at that point in time, if I'm in bed, it doesn't matter because I have this right next to my bed, but when it stops, I use my Candy Way, my Candy Way, the, this is the Glow MD face mask. I use this, this, by the way, the narrow was, was gifted to me. Um, I'd have to go back and look. I want to say last 
September maybe? October? Or November. I, I go back and look. But this was gifted to me. As was my Candy Way mask. My Candy Way mask was gifted to me right around the time that my mom had passed away. So I was not very consistent in the beginning because it was just a crazy time. But I typically use my Candy Way mask every single day. I've packed this when I've traveled. Now we are going on a big trip. I think this will be the first time that I'm going to not take these devices because we are looking to pack carry-on only and the weight restrictions on the luggage. And when you're going for almost three weeks, yeah. So I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. But I really hate to miss it. But then typically I put this on, I could be laying in bed, I can have it on, and it just is gonna be on for 10 minutes. And I just lay in bed with it until it, it stops, it lights up. And once it stops, I take it off. I didn't bring my hair mask in, but a lot of times when I'm traveling, like up in Maine, I don't have my hair helmet because it's so big and it's hard for me to, you know, to find room for it and all that stuff. So I typically have been laying this on my head, on my hair, and doing for 10 minutes as well. I don't have anything for my neck. I would like to get that, though. I would like to get, you know, the, the one that goes around your neck and, and all of that. I'd be really curious to see if it makes a difference you know, on a 70-year-old lady. I've seen it demonstrated on, um, you know, women that have, that in my opinion, look really good. And some of them are younger, and it's just made a big difference. The other thing I use at that point in time is I'll use my zip device. Sometimes I use my zip device twice a day. So I put a little bit of the, um, the serum on, this conducting gel, and I just, it doesn't dry, which I really like. So I can put it on my whole face. I turn this on and I have a little routine that I use and I try to lift up each side and I go back and forth, back and forth and around and up. And I'm focusing mainly on lifting right here as much as possible. When it stops, it's the time for me to go to the other side. And I do the same thing and I kind of repeat and then I go up and up and sometimes I go up and out and up and out. So I'm always doing something with it. Um, and then when I'm all done that routine and if I have gotten up at this point in time, you know, which I usually am, I'll go and I'll just pat in the serum, you know, wash my face gently if I want and pat that in. And then typically I wait a bit and I start my regular skincare routine. My morning skincare routine is going to be vitamin C. I've been going through a couple of different vitamin C's and um, trying to finish up some of the vitamin C products that I have, so I'm not gonna talk about any one favorite, but I've used vitamin C from Timeless. Love it, love it, love it, especially when you can get it on sale. I've used Mad Hippie. I've used, um, oh my gosh, the other one I'm thinking, I can't think of the name of it, but I've used a number of different vitamin C's and I really, I would not go without a vitamin C. So on my trip, I decanted my vitamin C and put it in a small little container. I really, really would not go without my vitamin C. If I'm home, I have my Matrixyl. I really love the Matrixyl, um, or I love the ordinary peptides. I put one or the other on, but I'm going through, this is the Matrixyl Synth 6 serum. I really like that. I'll put that all over my face, let it set in, and then I've been using, and I know I've talked about, and you've probably heard other people talk about tie-dye, but again, um, I've been, I think mainly be in the part of my being sort of gun shy about coming on YouTube a lot is because I don't think I look that great. My eyes are always, I always big puffy eyes and you know, baggy eyes and stuff. I'm not sleeping good in general. And I just have had so much on my mind and, and, and I've never been a good sleeper. So even if I don't have anything on my mind, you know, I try, I watch a lot of, um, May, and that's not keeping me up, but I do watch a lot of you, you um, true crime videos and, and keep up with a lot of the, the true crime cases that are out there. Oh my God, the Karen Reed case, the lady in Massachusetts that um, went on trial for apparently uh, running over her 
significant other. Um, he was a Massachusetts cop and the state was alleging that she hit him on purpose basically or maybe by accident and left him there. And um, if she and everyone admitted they were all drunk at this party, I'm not, I won't go into the whole thing, probably bore you to death. But there's a lot of really great podcasters out there that have covered the case. But my feeling always from the get go was I can see her. They've been together. She was jealous. He was jealous. There was a lot of things going on in their relationship. And he was raising his two, his niece and his nephew after his sister and her, her husband passed away. And he's a Boston cop. And, you know, a lot of different things, a lot of drinking and partying and all that stuff. And I can see in a height of passion yelling at Jay. I could yell at Jay and I could swear at him in anger. So they were playing these recordings of her yelling at him and swearing at him. And I'm like, thinking, I could have done that, you know, if we were drinking and he wanted to go to a party and I wanted to go home and then he didn't come home. And I could call him up and say some pretty nasty stuff. Doesn't mean I would run him over. <laughs> Although don't tell him that. But, um, but yeah, so I never thought if she did run him over uh, and backed into him or whatever, I thought, number one, it would have been an accident. So I don't think the murder charge ever, ever would have flown with anybody. And I don't even think she ran him over. It's a whole other story. I think something else happened to him. And I think Melissa 55 <laughs> agrees with me, as does Mary Ellen. Mary Ellen after 60, I, the two of us, we've talked about this case. So, um, yeah, it's an interesting case. Anyways, the jury was hung. They uh, Apparently, the jury say they couldn't come together on a murder. They, the murder that she, murder charge, they uh, was, you know, thrown out. But second degree murder is where they were hung. And uh, so, it looks like they're going to retry her. Uh, lots of different things in corruption. But anyways. Oh, and then the woman in Florida, the black swan, the ballerina. Oh my gosh. Did any of you see that one? Oh, I was like riveted to that case. She was found guilty. I was surprised at that one too. Um, but there, but the charge was, I mean, she definitely did shoot him, right? Self-defense, but she shot him. So if you look at the actual description did she did she have a gun in her hand yes did she pull the trigger yes did he die yes right it doesn't take into consideration the why you know the why so anyways i digress is anyone else into true crime oh my gosh anyways uh so it, i've been having these baggy eyes right and years ago i used tight eye and i really liked it but what i didn't like about it is that it stiffened me up under my eye after a while when you used it and um you know so you had to really be careful but i always loved how it looked after i used it so i was recently gifted this tight eye set and this is the eye and what I've been doing after I clean my face and I've done all my skincare is I dab a little bit on and I go around the bag and I still have bags they haven't disappeared but they they do look better when I do this so when I dab you know around my eye and, and around this one where my eyes are baggy I don't have to go too far down here um, but it it <laughs> It really, you can feel it starting to work. And then after like 10 minutes, I gently wash it off. That's different than how I used to use it. So I gently wash it off. And um, yeah, it's been like really, really good. And that once I wash it off, then I put on, they, I call this, I mean, this is a moisturizing serum. And I put this on. And I just do a tiny little bit because it's really nice. And I dabble this on there and I just let it sit and dry. It's a, it's a wonderful eye cream. I love it. And then after that's all dry, I then will start with my regular, you know, morning routine. And the first thing I usually put on after my skincare is dried and done is I put on my sunblock. And um, I, I wear my sunblock seven days a week, rain, sun, whatever. Um, and so a lot of times I've been using the e.l.f. Sen sensational, whatever it's called. It's the setting gel with the prime, with the, um, it's a setting, it's the, the gel, the primer gel, and it has sunblock in it. So I use that as my first level of sunblock on my face. And then after that dries, sometimes if I need more, I'll just use a regular sunblock, you know, that's, um, 
hopefully not white cast. I use all different ones. And I just, I let it dry. To me, the key has been to let it dry. Once it's completely dry, I then will finish with any makeup. I've been wearing very little foundation lately, but I have still loving my Estee Lauder. And um, the Huda Beauty, oh my gosh, not Huda Beauty, um, Lady Gaga, what's it called? I can't think of the name of it, but I have Lady Gaga's foundation. And I can, I'm telling you, I can only put a little bit on my finger and, and just tiny little dabs. It is really, for me, on my skin, it really covers. It's like, to me, it's high coverage. I was told when I bought it that it was a medium buildable coverage, not as high coverage as my Estee Lauder. And I was kind of like, oh, I really like my Estee Lauder. I know it covers, but I never felt cakey in it. Well, let me tell you, this is just like my Estee Lauder. It covers fabulous. And I just use a tiny, tiny bit. And and then I kind of like, sometimes I've got my brush, sometimes I have a, a little tiny makeup sponge and I just pat it in. And then I use, I've been using an, a really light e.l.f. Um, blush, basically, a little cream brush, blush, which I also then put on my lips. <laughs> so cheesy right put it on my lips and then I I do a setting spray and my setting spray has SPF in it and at that point I'm kind of done for the day I think so that's that's my makeup routine and my my tools I, I think at 70 the red light therapy mask it I would just not go without it and the Nera just gives me more of a and I use this one first and then put the red light therapy mask over. It's, it's part of my routine. So in the morning, I'm probably spending 30 minutes between my skincare devices, maybe 35. And then sometimes at night, after I've taken it all off, I use my narrow, I use my zip again. Because I'm, because I, I'm, you know, I'm down almost 50 pounds, as I said in my previous video. And I worry about my skin because I, I'm definitely sagging, <laughs> and I've always sagged. So uh, the in the other video, I said that I was trying to pack super light. So we've been putting a lot of skincare in these little pouches, which is really cool. Even if you buy travel size bottles, they're heavier and they stay the same size, right? But this, as you use the product, it gets flatter and it's super light. So I've got a whole bunch of stuff that I've decanted in here to put into my makeup, oh, I just dropped something, into my makeup, um, you know, it, into my liquids bag, I should say, for my flight. And I've also bought these Leak lick, Licks uh, Locks, Leak Licks, Leak Locks. These are kind of really cool. You put them over, um, you know, like, damn it, I used to always use the baggies, like the plastic bags. And you can just keep reusing them. So if you have a big bottle of something, you can stick this on. And it's going to seal that lid so that the if you were traveling where you could take a full size or you want to stick a full size in your luggage, well, you don't have to worry about it coming out. And it comes in different sizes for different types of bottles and covers. And it makes it so that it isn't going to leak out. I think these things are really cool. So most of my... In here, I've decanted into small little containers and then I've covered it with these things. And damn, yeah. Now, if I end up having to do a checked luggage, if I can figure it out, uh, then I could take a lot more with me. But I am really loving the idea of not having not having to, you know, lug all this stuff. And plus, when we're in Europe, right, we're going to be hopping on trains a lot. So we, we're going to go from Amsterdam to Frankfurt, Germany. In Frankfurt, Germany, we're going to take a train down to Bamberg, Germany, and we have to be able to maneuver our own luggage. So it's going to be an adventure. Because then we're going to take a train back to Amsterdam for our river cruise, and then a train to Stuttgart, and oh my gosh. Oh, and we have booked a eight-hour bike ride in the Black Forest. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. That. Oh, my gosh, the Black Forest. I remember when, as a kid when I was 12, and the last time I went to Germany and visited, I remember that, uh, seeing the Black Forest, going through parts of it. I just thought, I was, I was mesmerized. I also remember seeing all the castles 
you know, and that's one of the things that on the river cruise I'm so looking forward to is seeing the castles lining the mountains or whatever. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. So anyways, let me know if you guys are interested in a video on my nighttime, although I really have nothing much to say about that, but um, I'd love to share some of my summer adventures that, that I've been on. We, we've gone all over the place this summer in Maine and home and just, you know, we're staying most of the time in our RV, which if you and your spouse can live for longer than a week in 340 square feet, I think you're going to be together and be fine. <laughs> That's what I keep saying. Because Jay and I have been living in 340 square feet the whole time we were in Florida last year in Myrtle Beach last winter and then most of this summer when we've been um, in the RV. So anyways that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Oh and this wig is, where is my tag? Oh it's on the floor. Hold on. I remembered what it was, but I wanted to make sure I had the right color. I believe this is discontinued, and I, it's really too bad because I love this wig. It's it's really my style because it's kind of like messy. You know, it isn't like all put together and all that. It's a, it's more of a messy look, and some people don't like that look, but I really do. I like I like the messy look. I've been training it. I've been trying to keep the fibers off my head. This is a shade of blonde called Root Beer Float blonde and this is Beltress City Roast and this is H City Roast Hi uh, oh my god I can't even read it I don't have my glasses but it's City Roast and it is Root Beer Float Blonde. I think out of all the blondes I really like this blonde the best and my other wig that I wore in my last video is a completely different shade of blonde but the problem I think with you know, some of the wig manufacturers is that you can fall in love with a wig, City Roast, and or a color, and then they discontinue it. And to me, that it stinks. But yeah, this is City Roast, and this is Root Beer Bloat. Uh, bloat. I feel bloated. The Root, root Beer Float Blonde. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Oh, phew. Two videos for me. I wonder if I'm back. Bye-bye. <laughs>